This is Dr. Chopper. His likes include medicine, cotton candy, and the entire nation of Canada. His dislikes include spicy food, mad scientists, and compliments. Now, the world government has valued Chopper at 100 berries. I repeat, 100 berries. However, this number is incorrect. And today, we are going to discover Tony Tony Chopper's true bounty. Hello, and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today, we have another true bounty examination, one that has been widely requested ever since the original Luffy video, because now it is time to figure out exactly how much Chopper would be worth if his bounty, well, wasn't a joke. A hilarious joke, mind you, but a joke nonetheless. And in case you're not familiar, the True Bounty series aims to examine what a character would be worth if the world government knew everything about them that we do as readers and watchers, because their information is heavily flawed and quite incomplete, which is particularly obvious when it comes to Chopper because they still believe that he is a simple pet. So this is going to be quite different from our previous examinations because Chopper is significantly more of a threat than a mere 100 berries, but how much more? Hmm. Well, we're going to find out after a quick round of Cotton Candy Crush, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Our delightful little Chopper has been a very good boy and thus deserves a treat, but he simply can't decide between cotton candy and chocolate. Your job is to guess which of these sweet things Chopper is going to choose. If you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And if you do guess correctly, then you will have the honor of feeding Chopper his treat, which will our sweet tooth doctor to choose. Let's find out in three, two, one, and bam, it is chocolate. Specifically chocolate from Cacao Island in Tartaland, I believe. So if you guess cotton candy, then you know the thing to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new recruit, welcome. But to commence our true bounty journey, we're actually starting at a much later point in the series than usual. Just as our crew arrive on Drum Island, well and truly into the Grand's line, an arc that went completely unnoticed by the world government and usually unnoticed by us as well, because threat levels for most characters don't generally change as a result. But something interesting to note is that the primary antagonist of this arc, Mr. Wapole, falls into a bit of a weird space where he is both a pirate and a monarch of the world government, which is a very rare circumstance to be in if one is not a warlord of the sea. Unfortunately though, this means that Wapole and his crew of the Blicking Pirates do not have bounties assigned to them. And this is relevant because Chopper's notable achievement on this island would be the defeat of Chess Marimo, the, uh, the unholy fusion of Chess and Marimo. And Chopper utterly decimated them, but how do we quantify them as a threat? It's tricky because there is no effective way to, to power scale them. We're not power scaling Chess Marimo, that's, that's a waste of time. So we're going to have to turn to averages. And by that I mean, for example, if you are a threatening pirate in East Blue, the average bounty issued is three million berries. Although it is the weakest of the four seas, all four of which also pale in comparison to the average Grand Lion pirate. And at this point in the series, the kind of bounties that we were commonly encountering are mostly between the seven to 10 million mark. And this is derived from characters like Miss Valentine and Mr. Five, who had a bounty of 7.5 million berries and 10 million berries respectively. So we are going to start more or less in that very average zone, awarding Chopper 8.5 million berries for defeating a very average set of Grand Line pirates, which I will point out is already 8,499,900 berries larger than Chopper's ever highest canon recorded bounty. So we're off to a very positive start. And this will continue as we move on to Alabaster where Chopper has some very tangible results in his two on two fight against Miss Merry Christmas and Mr. Four. And here we do need to take into consideration that Usopp was a major factor in this victory, but our opponents have some rather fun numbers to dissect. They're both very much on the lower end of the officer age and scale, but Miss Merry Christmas was worth 14 million berries, whilst her partner, Mr. Four, was worth an incredibly low 3.2 million berries, which does make a lot of sense because without anyone to guide him, Mr. Four is more or less entirely useless. In fact, just take his dog gun away and he's already an order of magnitude less threatening. If anything, Lasso is the one who should have been assigned the bounty. Whatever the case, if we combine them as a team, then we get a base number of 17.2 million berries, which given that it was a team battle, I don't think that we can use that alone to increase Chopper above that. However, I do think it would be reasonable to place Chopper at least above Miss Merry Christmas's numbers and have him now sitting at 15 million berries. That's not quite all for Alabaster though, because this was our first world shaking event, given that collectively the Straw Hats had now brought down a Warlord of the Sea. And in theory, this should make the entire crew more infamous and threatening, given that this is a direct and successful assault on the world government. Unfortunately, in canon, the only two identified members of the crew were Luffy and Zoro. But in this case, the world government knows everything, so Chopper will incur an association fee, which at this point early on in his career will be a further 10 million berries, bringing his post alabaster total up to 25 million. I should say that Chopper does lag behind the other bounties we've investigated thus far, and he may continue to because his innate threat to the world government is not as strong as quite probably any other member of the Straw Hats. And that's due to the nature of Chopper's role as a doctor. You know, he doesn't have the devastating combative abilities of the monster trio, 
shown all the world-shaking skills to pay the bills of Nico Robin, or even the abilities of Nami to actually transport the crew to all of these crazy locations. I mean, yes, Chopper is undoubtedly important, but he doesn't quite present that direct threat that many of the other Straw Hats do. Not at this point, anyway. But now, if you're familiar with these bounty videos, you will know this is where we skip Jaya because almost nothing of relevance happens there bounty-wise, and we find ourselves on a deadly vacation in the sky. And here, Chopper has a pretty fantastic piece of experience to add to the old CV, which is his victory against my favorite of NL's priest, Gadatsu. Now, of course, we can't easily numerically quantify Gadatsu because he's a pretty formidable fighter, although he does come with a, <laughs> he comes with a lot of issues, such as forgetting to engage in basic life functions, like breathing, for example. He forgets to breathe often. Pretty integral to basic existence stuff, but he is powerful nonetheless and a user of observation haki, which will already catapult him into a threat sphere far above your average grand line riffraff, which does include contenders currently hovering around Chopper's bounty worth. For example, Mr. Three was worth 24 million berries, and for all of his incredible faults, Gidatsu would probably outclass that as both a combatant and a disciple of God and L. And given that Chopper did defeat him one-on-one, -on -one, I think that 15 million is quite a reasonable number for this achievement, which will now sit our delightful reindeer man at 40 million berries. As per usual, Long Ring Long Land will bring us nothing, so it's onwards to Water 7, which actually also usually gets skipped. But I do want to point out that Chopper does indeed have a notable action here when he attacks the Frankie family house, along with Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji. And I very much ignored this event for the other three because at this point it was quite irrelevant to their pretty comparatively stratospheric true bounty numbers. And because the Frankie family have zero association with the Bog government, I mean, if it was an attack on the Galila company, that would probably be a different story. However, this event does show that Chopper in particular is increasing as a threat because he is both willing and able to jump into these large scale destructive brawls and threaten general peace. And as such, I just don't think we can ignore it in the same way that we did with the other Straw Hats and throwing another 10 million onto our now delinquent reindeer is going to be the solution, bringing Water 7 Chopper up to 50 million berries. Then after a lovely ride on the sea train, we now arrive at any slobby where things are going to explode for Chopper. This is usually a pretty gigantic increase for everyone, but Chopper in particular has a lot going for him. Firstly, the defeat of Mr. Yuli Yuli Kumidori of CP9. Secondly, the fact that this is a world-shaking event situation, much like Alabasta, but also because this reveals Chopper's true destructive potential in monster form. For the sake of any slobby, we really can call Chopper something of a triple threat and his bounty will multiply as is appropriate. Although we're not going to triple it, we're actually going to quadruple it to 200 million berries. And this is because as part of a pirate crew that easily destroyed the judicial island, this is cause for serious concern all on its own and that is an easy 50 million threat fee. Then we have to contend with the defeat of a rather powerful member of CP9, not just a defeat actually, because to call monster Chopper versus Kumidori a fight rather than another murder would simply be inaccurate. And so if Chopper was at 50 million previously, it is easily caused to double that number. But also a final 50 million added on top simply because of the idea that the world government will have discovered that Chopper is now an awakened Devil Fruit user and that this monster form is a pretty absurdly destructive threat to them. And adding all of those fees together effectively quadruples Chopper's initial number, putting him at 200 million berries post any slobby. Which just for a bit of fun is actually higher than Sanji's true bounty at this point, which I had at 160 million. But at the same time though, Chopper is demonstrably more of a threat at this stage, so I do think it makes some degree of sense. Sort of like how Eustace Kid was valued higher than Luffy at Sabadi because he was far more destructive and a collateral damage geared entity. That is very much how Chopper compares to Sanji here. So Chopper then moves on to Thriller Bark as a well-established and quite feared member of the Straw Hat Pirates and within the Florian Triangle, Chopper's notable engagement would be teaming up with Robin to face off against Dr. Hogback and Sindri. Sadly though, Hogback doesn't have a known bounty and it really might not even matter if he did because Oz ended that conflict more so than anything. But speaking of, Chopper did go on to team up with the rest of the crew to face Oz and of course, Luffy eventually brought down Gekko Moria, which is another world shaking event or it would have been if not for the world government sneakily covering it up. And going by the any slobby fee standards I previously set up, I don't think that Chopper's worth anything less than another 50 million simply for his involvement here, bringing him to a quarter of a billion berries post Thriller Bark, which I have made sound much more impressive than it is. After which point he becomes separated from the crew on Sabadi and finds himself in the Torino Kingdom where Chopper discovers a vast library of medical knowledge, a lot of which is quite unknown to the world at large, which is interesting because it does make you question whether the world government would want to increase Chopper's bounty simply to secure that knowledge somehow. But I would say probably not. My impression of the five elder stars is that they don't really care about the well-being of their people too much, and the marine branch led by now Fleet Admiral Sakazuki certainly doesn't have a focus on healing and, you know, nice things. So what is important is that Chopper's monster form becomes much more controllable post time skip, and he does develop other forms as well, but 
but the most integral thing is definitely that increased threat of Monster Chopper, since all of that raw power can now be put to very specific use. And after reuniting with the now revived Straw Hat Pirates, that generally upscaled threat is going to be present in the form of a 100 million berry increase. 50 for the increased danger of the monster form, and 50 for putting himself to use alongside a crew of true monsters, especially that captain thing, which will all result in a chopperific 350 million berries. Diving down to Fishman Island now, this is becoming a very standard stop, another event scenario where the Straw Hats defeat 100,000 members of the new Fishman Pirates. Chopper's opponents, they're not wildly noteworthy, but Shirahoshi she is, because as always, she is an ancient weapon. And having established friendship with someone who could destroy entire islands with ease, well, that's, that's a bit of a slight problem for the world government, because they like islands. And in the past, I value both those aspects at 50 million apiece, and this will be no exception. The whole ancient weapon thing is especially underrated in One Piece, but alas, Chopper will be entering the new world with a commanding presence of 450 million berries. Next up, we have Dress Rosa, which is another standard stop, or not, actually, because come to think of it, Chopper never actually set foot on the island. He stayed on the sunny and got transformed into beautiful modern art. But Dress Rosa is always an easy one because most of the Straw Hats and Straw Hat related associates received 50 million for being part of the defeat of Doflamingo, even the ones who weren't on the island at the time. So that's as good a reason as any to have Chopper hit that 5 million berry mark. Although in canon, the world government literally doubled Chopper's bounty here. Doubled from a mighty 50 berries to a mighty, uh, 100 berries. So he could just stick with canon and double his number, which is very tempting, but uh, no, let's, let's try and take it semi-seriously. So then we go on a brief elephant ride before landing on Whole Cake Island, where Chopper, well, he was there. His crowning moment was probably teaming up with Carrot in the Mirror World to face off against Brule, Randolph Diesel, and my favorite test of Whole Cake Island characters, Noble Croc. What's more important is being part of the whole attack on Big Mom situation, which is the most shocking thing that the Straw Hats have done to date. However, I don't think it distinguishes Chopper as as much of a threat as it did with the Monster Trio specifically. It's still an increase though, a very familiar number for this particular particular video as well, which will be 50 million berries. Thus bringing Tony Tony Chopper's true bounty to date up to 550 million berries. Which fun fact is the exact same as Ace's former bounty, so I'm not sure how well these actually stack up, but at the same time, in retrospect, Ace was almost certainly undervalued as well, and just a victim of the pre-time skip pre haki era. But at the very least, 550 million berries is much closer to Chopper's true worth than a mere 100 berries. And if you want to see more true bounty explanations, then I highly recommend you check out Luffy's Zoro and Sanji's videos. Meanwhile, please do leave your thoughts on Chopper in the comments below or even join my Discord server. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.